All right. So we had finish, finished up our previous discussion with areolar connective tissue. And we're going to talk now about some of the other proper uh, connective tissue types. So our next connective tissue is also a loose connective tissue. It is adipose. And adipose is fat tissue. It is a matrix uh, with areolar connective tissue and uh, adipose tissue cells which hold globules of fat. Um, there are a lot of cells that contain these large lipid deposits. It functions in many ways not only just for energy storage although that is a major aspect of it but it also insulates the body and protects some organs. Now as an energy storage this is a very effective way for the body to store energy. Um, adipose tissue uh, lipids contain a lot more calories per gram than carbohydrates and proteins. Carbohydrates and proteins have four calories per gram. Lipids have nine. And so this is a compact way of storing a high energy. The downside is that when we store these lipids, it is difficult to get the lipids back out of storage, as uh, anybody who has been on a diet can attest to. Now, the look of this uh, connective tissue is we've got large globules of uh, the, these lipids. Um, this looks a lot like some of our simple squamous epithelium taken from certain viewpoints, but one difference is there's no visible nuclei in these, uh, uh, in the center of the cell. The nuclei are off to the side. Now, another loose connective tissue is reticular connective tissue. And this is made mostly of reticular fibers. These fibers run through the structure of organs. Um, so it's this internal supporting network of largely lymphoid organs, which include lymph nodes, spleen, bone marrow. Also, we see it in liver. And this helps those organs retain their shape and helps keep the cells uh, in the appropriate relationship to one another. It is a little bit hard when you look at reticular connective tissue to tell exactly where the tissue is and where the organ is because it's all kind of interspersed but what you're looking for are these fibers and that's really the reticular connective tissue the rest of this stuff through here is tissues that are in the organ that uh, it lies in one connective tissue that a lot of people are surprised about is blood uh, vascular tissue. It is the only liquid connective tissue. It is the liquid portion is this fluid called blood plasma and you don't see the fibers. Uh, all connective tissues do have fibers but you only see the fibers in blood when clotting occurs and that's because the fibers form from smaller proteins that are uh, free-floating in the bloodstream. Largely uh, blood functions as a transport vehicle for, actually, not largely, it is the transport vehicle for all the materials that are in our body. We think of it as transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide, and that is a very important aspect. It is the most immediate activity of blood, but the fact is that everything that's in every cell of your body got there through transport via blood. So all the nutrients, all of the uh, different ions that our body needs are moved, around, moved about via blood. As a connective tissue, blood has um, a lot of formed elements. These things we call red blood cells are not actually cells. They don't have a nucleus. They don't have any organelles. They are bags of chemicals. And so for that reason, we actually would think of that as part of the matrix. The plasma is also the matrix. Um, but we do have some living cells. Those are cells that have a full uh, nucleus and complement of organelles, and they are able to function. And those are white blood cells. And we have these white blood cells 
which allow us to combat whoop, combat disease. We also, if you see these small little dots here, those are platelets that are important in clotting. Now, we've talked about the connective tissues. Our next group of tissues are the muscle tissues. And there are three major types. We have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. These have specific locations that they are located and specific characteristics. But one characteristic they all share is that when they are stimulated, they contract. And so this is one of our excitable tissues. Now, the three types, we have skeletal muscle. And skeletal muscle is the only one that we can voluntarily control. I can decide to move my arm, wiggle my finger, whatever, and I can move the muscles that do that. The way that this muscle works, it contracts and it pulls on skin and bone. Muscles always pull. Muscles don't push. They pull, they shrink and get smaller, and they tug on things. And by that contraction, we are able to get um, movement. Now, this produces movements of facial expression, it produces movements of uh, bones, limbs, all of that. There are characteristics of skeletal muscle, some that are shared with other muscle types. Um, specifically, uh, a shared one is that it is striated, and cardiac muscle has that same characteristic. This is the only tissue in the body that is multinucleate, that is, it has more than one nucleus, and that just relates to the size of the cell. These cells are so long that if we had just one nuclei and there was damage very far from that nuclei, it would take an extremely long time to repair. The fact is that these cells are long and cylindrical in nature. And for instance, I have a muscle that attaches to the base of my skull which actually goes down to uh, part of my pelvis. You know, so we can have very long muscle cells. Those muscle cells then uh, have to have this, this characteristic of multiple nuclei. The visually muscle tissues, uh, striated muscle, skeletal muscle, this is an example of why we have the, we have this long fiber. The fibers are running horizontally. But if you see those little stripes, those are the striations, and you see those horizontally. That is a product of the overlap of certain proteins in the muscle which allow it to contract and contract quickly. Um, you can see here, too, multiple nuclei. So this is one big long cell, but there's a nucleus, a nucleus, a nucleus, a nucleus. And so they are taking care of different zones of that muscle. Now, cardiac muscle is involuntary. Well, like I said, um, skeletal muscle is voluntary. In fact, it's the only voluntary one of these uh, three muscle types. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. Um, its function is to pump blood. And so it has some characteristics that are different than skeletal muscle that allow it to do this effectively. Cardiac muscle, for instance, cannot fatigue. It cannot get tired. So it contracts a little bit slower, more forcefully than smooth mu or skeletal muscle does. Um, there's no bones in the heart. So cardiac muscle has to be attached to other cardiac muscle. And it does this at junctions called intercalated discs. And within those intercalated discs, we have lots of gap junctions. <clears throat> now, purpose for that, uh, in skeletal muscle, we have a nerve that goes to every single cell of our skeletal muscle. We don't have that in the heart. And what we have is a nerve that goes to a certain area of the heart, stimulates that area, and then that area starts to contract and it transmits signals to other cells through these intercalated discs. Now, that does mean if there's a scar somewhere in the heart, that cells on one side of the scar cannot communicate with cells on the other side. Um, it is 
striated just like skeletal muscle um, so you can see the pattern of proteins in there that allow it to contract and contract with good force but there's only one nucleus per cell because the cells are short additionally the cells are branched that is rather than being long and, and linear they are short with branches that go off in all sorts of directions so as you can see here there's a branch off of that cell there's a branch um, and these are the intercalated discs you look at this picture of actual cells you can see these dark bands that are the intercalated discs you can see single nuclei located in the cells and you can see those fine striations you can also see that this is branching so here's a cell that branches that way and that way and up off there the last of the muscle types is smooth muscle tissue and smooth muscle is under involuntary control as well and it's called smooth muscle because we can't see any striations in that this is muscle that contracts very slowly but with a good amount of force and it's located in all surrounding tubes in our body so it's in the stomach and the digestive tract it's in the bladder it surrounds blood vessels and it controls the volumes that are in those vessels characteristics one nucleus per cell short spindle shaped cells and if you look at a slide of this it does look quite a bit like that uh, the connective tissue the uh, dense regular connective tissue that we looked at earlier if you look on the virtual website and there are links over to the right when you are on your um, presentation you can see the different characteristics between this and uh, the dense regular connective tissue a little bit better the last of our tissue types is nervous tissue which is composed of neurons those are the cells that actually send signals and then there's a group of support cells called glia the function of nervous tissue is to send impulses so it is also an irritable tissue just like muscle but when it's irritated it conducts a signal as opposed to contracting if you were to look at a slide you would see these darker areas those are neurons whereas this space is filled with the glia so only about half of the mass of our central nervous system is actually nerve tissue associated with sending signals all of the glia are support cells and we'll talk about the glia and their specific activities when we get into the nervous system one thing about nervous tissue it has a lot of processes that come off of it one of those processes is an axon and down that one axon it can send a signal out the other processes are all dendrites and these are branches that connect up to lots of other nerve cells or sensory organs and they allow signals to come into this cell body and then the cell body based on the input that it receives decides whether or not to send a signal out at this point we're going to get into some aspects of tissue repair and wound healing so this is a good place to stop this presentation and we will pick up on tissue repair in a short presentation subsequent to this thank you very much